Hello, Grace Point family. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you joining us today and, and how much I enjoy bringing these little messages to you. It, it means the world. Your feedback to me has encouraged my soul. And I can't thank you enough for tuning in, and I can't thank you enough for sharing this. Please share these with as many people as possible. We want as many people to get this message as possible. We've been walking through this idea of how we can be a courageous Christian in days like we're living in today because we know of the challenge of the day we're living in for sure. And I, I want to come back today and talk to you about David. We've talked about Paul the last couple of times we're together. Let's talk about David. And specifically the message today is this, maintaining courage when fear overwhelms you. I bet every one of you would have to admit there's been times in your life when you got in a place of fear and it just crippled you. I, can, I will admit to you, I know I've been in places like that in my life and that's not where God wants us to live. It's how do we overcome that in these days and maintain courage even when fear is trying to set in our lives. I read this little quote, I want to share it with you from David Jeremiah, and I, I just really revere David Jeremiah. He said this, fear, fear can dominate you, faith can desert you, frustration can distress you, foes can demoralize you, the future can depress you, failure can defeat you, friends can disappoint you, and fatigue can drain you. But not if you keep your courage. Listen to this. Only the discouraged, those who have lost their confidence in God and his goodness, will be defeated. Those who keep their courage are the ones who will conquer the threats that always come against them. And so I want to talk today about maintaining courage even when fear seems to overwhelm you. Now, there's several things we learn in, in Psalm 34 and specifically the first nine verses. We learn about this little story that David's going through. As you know, David lived his life at, a per, at this particular time being pursued like a wild animal. Saul was out to get him and to kill him. He's hiding in caves. He's trying every way in his po possible power to stay away from getting caught by Saul. It was a very distressing time and a time of great fear for David. And in the midst of that, amazingly, he never lost his courage in who God was. And so let's talk about that in these nine verses out of Psalm 34. The first thing is this. The first thing I want you to know is it absolutely takes courage to praise God. Now listen, on a good day when everything's going well in your life, it takes courage to praise God. But especially when you're in a place of great challenge or in a place of fear, it's really hard sometimes to do that. But look what it says in these first three verses. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be on my mouth. My soul will make its boast in the Lord. The humble will hear it and rejoice. Finally, verse 3, it says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I want to remind you, he's praising God in the midst of his place of fear. He's, he's honoring God and praising God in a very difficult place. Again, it's easy to do on the mountaintop, sometimes hard to do in the valley. But interesting enough, even though he's in this very difficult place, the first thing he chose to do was to praise God. That's an awesome thing. Number two, it takes courage to admit our problem. And sometimes we need to go to God and just be honest, don't we? Look what it says in the next verse, in verse 4. It says, I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. He admits, my problem is I'm in a place of fear. I'm in a place where I don't understand. I'm in a place where it's overwhelming me right now. And I admitted that to God. The best thing we could ever do with our fears is admit to God that we're fearful. He asked God to help us with that. And that's exactly what David did in this situation. He called on the Lord in this place of fear. And listen to me, he confessed his trust in who God was. That's exactly what he did. And so if you're in a place of fear right now, call upon his name, ask for his help, and confess to him that you trust him more than the thing that you're facing in life. And so he maintained his courage despite the fear in his life. And so again, one more time, it takes courage to praise God. It takes courage to admit what your problem is, and he did that. The final thing he does is he, he took courage in this. It takes courage to find assurance. Now, here's the great word that he gives us here. He goes on to says in verse 5, it says, They looked upon him and were radiant. This is so cool. Their faces will never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. So he finds himself in a place of fear. 
He runs to God and confesses to God, I'm in a place of fear, would you please help me with this? And then he was reminded of the assurance he had because of his relationship with God. You have that same assurance. It's there for you as well. Maintain your faith and courage, even when fear creeps in, even when you don't know what to do next. Trust him anyway. And that's what David did. That's what you can do. And when fear comes to overwhelm you, you can overwhelmingly conquer that fear by trusting in God. Well, let's take that to heart and let's pray about it. Father, we love you. We need you. And we ask you, God, in our places of fear, that you'd replace our fear with faith, that you'd fill us with your spirit, God, and give us the ability to be courageous Christians, even in the days that we're living now. We love you so much. Thank you for your faithfulness. In Christ's name, amen. I can't wait to see you next time. Take care.